Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will cover the incremental data load in ETL. Incremental data load approach is the ideal design pattern. In this process, we identify and process new and modified rows since the last time ETL pipeline was run. Incremental data load is efficient in a sense that we only process subset of rows and it utilizes less resources. For example, if you're working with a table that has 20,000 rows, however, there are only 500 new records and 200 modified records since the last ETL run, then the incremental load would only process 700 rows. Now imagine if your table is 10 times bigger. As our data scales, this approach becomes a must. This technique, if applied correctly, involves minimal risk, is efficient, and it preserves the historical data. So far, we have covered the full load approach where we delete all records and load everything from the source system. This approach is simple and easy to set up. However, with a large data set, this becomes a performance bottleneck. As your data scales, your ETL process will take longer to load. The time to move and transform data is proportional to the amount of data you're processing. Per our example above, it will take significantly less time to process 700 records than 20,000 records. There are various incremental load approaches. Number one, source change detection. Two, destination change comparison. And three, change data capture. Today we will cover the second approach. And I have covered the CDC approach in this video here. If you're interested in CDC, then check this out. In the source change detection design pattern, we use two key fields, modified at and created at datetime fields to detect changes. We pull data into the ETL pipeline that is inserted and or changed since the last ETL run. If your source system does not support the source change detection, meaning it doesn't have the created at and the modified at dates, then we fall back to source to destination comparison. We compare the source data to the destination to determine which are new or modified rows. This method of change detection requires a row by row comparison to differentiate unchanged and changed data. This is less performant than the source change detection. For this approach, we load all the data into ETL pipeline for comparison. We will implement the destination change comparison next. We will use the customer table from AdventureWorks database that we previously set up. Let's utilize the code from the previous ETL pipeline session to define variables and database details and establish connection to source and destination databases. We read the data into a data frame with pandas. To keep this example simple, I'll only read the 10 rows. On the initial run, we will load all the data from the source to destination. So now both of our environments are in sync. Let's say the following day, we have two new transactions where we add two new customers to our database. And also we have a name change for one of the existing customer with customer key 11006. Let's see how we compare the two data sets to detect changes. Let's go through the code. First, we apply the tuple function to each row. This gives us a series object with a list of tuples. Each tuple contains the whole row from the source and the target data set. Then we apply the isN method on the source to check if each tuple exists in the target. The result is a series with bool values. Bool values are true if the tuple from the source is in the target. And in the end, we negate the result with the tilde sign and apply the filter on the source. The end result is we get only the rows from the source that are not in the target. We separate the modified and new records from this subset into new data frames. We call them inserts and modified. Let's insert and update our target table. The insert part is easy. We simply append the new records to the existing table in the database with two SQL function. To update the records in existing table, we can write an insert statement and update row by row. The row based approach is slow. So we'll go with the set based approach. We will create a function called update to SQL. And this function takes a data frame, in this case, data frame with modified records, table name, and the primary key of the table. We store the data frame in a temporary table and build a dynamic SQL query that updates this table. We can use this function for any table. We join the temporary table and the target table on the primary key. 
And if there is a match, then we set the target table columns to the temporary tables column. We call this function now with a modified data frame and pass it the table name and the primary key of the table. The function updates the table rows with updates from the source. We have successfully updated the modified records. This is how we can use the destination change comparison in a Python ETL pipeline. Join me next time for the source change detection. This is all for now. Like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.